push to try and get into the Christmas spirit. We've got a month head start. Uh, so we'll be working uh, our way through the Advent, and today is hope. Uh, and so, Cindy, come on up and start with the, the verse. And I, Jack, listen very hard for Jack. He's a very quiet speaker. Yes. Um, so Jack's going to do, I guess you're doing the whole reading? Yeah, sure. Come, right. Get a feel for this. Come on up and get a, get a feel oh, for the boy. pulpit. All right. <laughs> All right. Excuse me. For, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Jack, when I, by the time I was six, I had spent a lot of time playing with matches. Jack had never lit a match in his life before this morning. Praise the Lord. Uh, all right. Good job. Awesome. Uh, I'm, when I came to this church as a Baptist boy, not that many Baptists celebrate Advent, uh, but we did here, and I really have grown to love Advent. Uh, it's a focus. Uh, I, I don't know. We always had marvelous celebrations surrounded by people you love. Uh, my wife was always very generous. She bought me anything that she thought I might possibly like. And Christmas Eve, uh, not Christmas Eve, I'm sorry, Christmas Day, Eve, I would sit and say, I think I've missed it. Uh, Christmas would come uh, and go. And I was as, as excited about Jesus uh, as you could get, I think. And it wasn't that I didn't love the Lord, but somehow uh, in the preparation or maybe a missed focus, I would miss Christmas. And so uh, I'm happy to be part uh, of Advent. And, uh, you know, it, it started as a Roman Catholic thing, I think. Uh, and as a young man, I would be like, can anything good come from Rome? Uh, but there is. I think there's a, there's a blessedness to the focus of hope, uh, joy, love, and peace. Uh, and so that on my goal is this year, as I sit there on Christmas Day uh, Eve, to say, no, I, I've got it. And I think it'll be intentional, and I think it will be... Uh, through God's working, and I hope that he can work in your heart. If it's a lonely time for you or a sad uh, time because of loss for you, I, I pray that this Advent season will help bring um, the joy of Christmas truly to you. Um, I'm standing here, a person that likes plans and, and, and planning, and uh, last night as I was praying for you, I pray for you by your face, uh, and where you're located, and I'm trying to see, uh, there, I, I got all of you last night, uh, even you, Jack, uh, and, and, I, and I see you, and I think of you, but while I was praying, um, I, I had a, a, an addendum to, to the message, and, and so for me, I feel like I'm way out on a limb, uh, because it is not rehearsed whatsoever, uh, but I think it will add value to our time together and your thinking of uh, Christmas and, and particularly today, hope. Um, I read an article from Allie Bowman. Uh, you wouldn't know her, but I wanted to give her credit for it. <clears throat> the, the difference helping us distinguish between hope and faith, she wrote this, that faith is a belief in a concrete yet currently invisible reality. Hope is the attitude that we have while we wait for that reality to become visible. Wow. Let me read it again. Faith is a belief 
in a concrete yet currently invisible reality, hope is the attitude we have while we wait for that reality to be uh, come visible. I cannot see your faith. Uh, faith is a matter of uh, an understanding, uh, something that has become a truth uh, to us from the word of God, uh, an understanding in the mind and a receiving of it in the heart. And I cannot see your mind and I cannot see uh, your heart, uh, but I can see your hope. There's some of you here that as you go through life, um, you go through with hope. And there's truly a battle that takes place uh, day by day, I believe minute by minute, uh, for uh, you to continue because of your faith in that which is concrete uh, to maintain and keep hope. Um, there is a, a spiritual hole in each one of us. And I, I was, we had a blessed time yesterday at the breakfast. We uh, looked at John 10.10, 10, and in that scripture it says, The thief has come uh, but for to kill, steal, and destroy. And Jesus says, I am come that you might have life, and you might have it more abundantly. There is a hole in you that is either being filled uh, or is draining. Uh, there's no... There's no uh, middle ground. You're either being filled uh, of things of God or you're being drained by him and thinking of can people see your hope? Uh, this is my, and, and uh, you know, I don't know if any of you ever smoke pot. I hope not. But you know, you get this, I've heard that you, you get this idea this great idea when you're high and then when you sober up, you're like, oh, it wasn't that clever. Uh, I've had this, this thought in the middle of the night while I was praying, not smoking, that uh, this will help you to see it. And so I, I, everything I had was right in the truck, so I've got an assistance. This is my air hose. This is one of Jackson's favorite toys in the shop. Each of us have a spiritual hole. And in, in Romans 15, chapter 13, I believe it's, it's up on the screen. Let me turn there. Romans 15, 13. The scriptures say this, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. If we are to be filled and God wants us to be filled, He wants us to be filled with fruits of the Spirit, the things that He, joy and peace, but God wants you to be filled with hope. And He goes on to say, uh, May ye abound in hope, overflowing. Uh, I have no intention of popping any balloons today, but on my practice run, two, one out of two did pop, so I hope they don't. Uh, but he wants you to abound. And I believe, and I was reminded as I went through life this week, uh, I was at a point in the middle of the week where I said, God, it's too much. What, what was in front of me? Uh, it's just too much. Uh, and, and I started to be a bit discouraged. And I reminded myself, you know, count your blessings, uh, name them one by one. I, I reminded myself of things that I have faith in, uh, that, that God sent his son, uh, that there's a home for me in heaven, that he's coming again. Uh, and, and he began to fill me and, and change. Uh, the opposite of hope is despair. Uh, and we've got that spiritual hole. And so I'm going to give this a whirl. As, as he's filling us, he's either filling you, isn't that wild? Such a pleasant, you're wise to cover your ears. 
he, he's either filling you uh, or, or you're being drained and deflated and despair is setting in. And, and which are you? And I thought to, today again, I'm sorry about the noise. Cindy, I wonder if you could mute me when, but when you see this going up, just hit the mute. And then, of course, back on. Um, when you see a balloon, you never think of a balloon by itself, do you? It's like if you, if you saw a balloon flying by in the sky, you would think it, it broke free from some party. Uh, when, when if there's a balloon up here uh, on the stage, you would think um, it, there, there's a party and here's a straggler. God wants you to be filled with a balloon. And uh, honestly, uh, this one... Um, is not very attractive. This one was full, and it's all deformed. And uh, be be a filled balloon, and and as you are filled, come together uh, with. I wanted. To uh, you you actually are good at. <laughs> I know you don't like to be up in front of people. Could you tie these? <laughs> she hates to be in front of people, truly. Uh, tie them as I fill them. A, a balloon wants to be in a group. And you know, when, when I was, uh, actually I could remember a time, you might not be able to mute me, because I'm talking, hold on. Telling me that um, I was a balloon and I really wanted to be around the other filled balloons, uh, spiritual people, spiritually minded people. And you may feel here that you're on the outside. You tie that quick. I would, still be, I would still be struggling. I wanted to be around this other spiritually minded people. And so if you feel that you're on the outside uh, of... hear um, a horrible noise. Wait till the compressor kicks on. I, I wanted to be around other spiritually minded people and so as the Lord was filling me uh, and I think with hope of his promises, I would linger. You know, you, you think of the people, oh, they're on the inside and I'm on the outside. Uh, I was accused, I found out later uh, from the pastor, <laughs> I like that face. Somebody left the church that I was going to, and I had no title there. I was just excited about Jesus, and he was filling me uh, with hope. Somebody left the church because they said, oh, Brother Greer, he's on the inside, and uh, try as I might, uh, I can't get on, on the inside. And he was mad at me. Well, you want to know the truth of why Brother Greer was on the inside? Every time... The church doors were opened. I was, I was literally on the inside. Uh, when, when a missionary would come over to speak, the, the, the church staff uh, and the missionary family would go upstairs. They would have a special dinner. Uh, I would linger. Uh, I would linger talking to the missionary. I would linger talking to the pastor. Everyone else had left because they knew the special dinner was taking place, and there's Brother Greer. And the pastor's like, Brother Greer, do you want to come to the dinner with us? <laughs> <laughs> yes! What made you think of that? And, and I would go. Uh, and God... And, and, oh, I will not plug in the compressor. I think this is our last... Unless you got any hot air on you... We, we, balloons by themselves, okay, one more. Do you, do you think you could tape these together somehow? In, in a, in a, in a uh, I know, 
I'm going to have to buy your dinner. As, as we are filled with hope or, or not, uh, that hole uh, is, is there. I'm going to do one more by the old-fashioned way. Do you know, if we had, if we had the hole that's, if we're connected to Jesus Christ, he will fill you. Uh, it says in Ephesians that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. If we are connected to him, he will fill you with his hope, with his spiritual gifts. Uh, do you know, this? you're going to find this impossible to believe, I have offended people. I was shocked, too, when I did <laughs> There's people in our midst that aren't in our midst any longer because I've offended them. Uh, there's people in our midst that I have offended, and they're still in our midst. Do you know why they're still in our midst? Because God is filling them. And so... I believe if we're connected, I believe if we're filled with hope, he's going to be uniting us rather than separating us. And I thought, and I hope, hope this isn't offensive t- to anyone, but do you know when, uh, when somebody is disconnected, uh, they, they make a lot of noise and then they leave. If we can stay connected and to be filled with the, the fruits of the Spirit and to be filled with the hope of, of God, uh, who is hope, He's going to unite us. And so it's a beautiful thing. I want to give away a, 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 a hidden treasure. Uh, there's, two, four, there's five balloons here uh, on Wednesday night. I was hoping to get to seven. But on Wednesday night, uh, right here, uh, we have uh, people that are filled uh, with the hope, uh, meeting and praying. And if you come uh, and you're not, uh, and I don't really ever want to twist anyone's arm to come to prayer meeting. Because if you're not up for it, I think you might, uh, I I don't know if I can do it. But I want to, Again, you know, honestly, I worked hours on this. I don't know if we're going to get to it. Uh, Cheer up. It might be a short message. Have you ever seen someone that could pop uh, those hot water bottles, the strong men? Uh, I saw those guys, and they're much bigger than me, but their lungs are so strong they can blow up and pop a hot water bottle. I've got a question for you. What is this balloon doing? I won't make it, it won't be loud. It's deflating, it's deflating but what is another way to say it? Leaking. Leaking. It's venting. It's venting. Have you ever had somebody come up to you and say, I just need to vent? And so they come up to you and they begin to vent. And they're venting. And you know what happens if we're not careful? This balloon is sucking the hope and life out of this balloon. I wonder if in in our midst, and we'll know that we're not saying anything nasty, but, uh, you know, when when we get filled, we have to be connected. And so you plug it, and and if it fills you. Uh, I, I wonder if, if the next time someone comes up to you and wants to vent, just say, plug it. Plug it and be filled. <laughs> no one outside our church will understand it, but uh, we'll understand it. Be filled uh, with the hope of God. And, and if you feel like you're on the outside as God begins to do a work and to fill you with hope that he wants to fill you with, uh, come and, and assemble 
yourselves and be part of the group. We had a, a, a meeting, and, and as I, I was praying for you last night, by your faces and by where you sit, and do you know some of your faces I get right away because I see your face all the time. I thought of Jack. Uh, I've seen Jack three times this week. Uh, I, I saw him. Uh, I didn't see him on Wednesday. I saw him on Friday night. Uh, I saw him on Saturday, and I see, see him again this morning. And if you feel like you're on the outside and you're feeling a, a, little, a little empty, uh, come and gather around. If you could, before you come, plug it. Uh, but then come and be filled. Uh, at Saturday's meeting, it was a blessed meeting. We had fellowship. We had time around the Word of God. And it was a sweet time. As we cross into Christmas, I know it's a time when we can be discouraged. I know there's a time when that hole seems to be more willing than usual to be drained. But be reminded uh, of the promises that God has given you. The faith is that belief in the concrete, uh, yet currently invisible reality. Uh, hope is the attitude that we have while we wait for it. Uh, do you have hope? Have you come uh, to believe the promises of God that he has for you? And if you do, remind yourself of that when that hole starts to drain and the evidence of, of these spirit filling starts to show and you're a bit deflated. Uh, remind yourself of the promises. And you may not have uh, hope. You might not have come to faith uh, that, that God has performed uh, all the things that he did. In our reading this morning, we did that reading uh, on purpose. In Isaiah 6, where he says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. He is speaking to Israel, in, uh, I believe, in captivity. They are afflicted because of their sin. And in the midst of their sin, God brings an affliction to draw them back to him. And in the midst of it, he says, I'm giving you the promise of a savior. I'm giving you the promise of a deliverer. Have hope in the midst of your affliction. And interestingly, uh, in verse 7 uh, of Isaiah 9, there when it says the government shall be upon his shoulder and of the increase uh, there'll be no end and he'll reign on the throne, the zeal of the Lord. That verse was written to you and I. As God gave hope to Israel in the midst of their affliction, looking forward to the New Testament, God says, I want you to have hope as well. Hope for the, the promise of the coming of the, the second coming of the Savior. Uh, do you have it? I had, uh, you know, I think this would have been my, my greatest message ever if I had got to preach it. You'll have to take that on faith. Uh, maybe I'll get to preach it again. There is one, one part of it that I want to read uh, from William Booth. He had a very, uh, I thought, a, a tremendous thought. These are evidences. Hope uh, is an evidence of the faith that we claim to have. Hope is that evidence. And if you have no evidence, um, maybe you don't have hope. And if you have no hope, uh, maybe it's because you have no faith. Have you come to faith and believe that God is God, that he sent Jesus Christ, that Messiah, that he's promised to return again and take us to an eternal home? William Booth said this, and I wonder if you have uh, no hope or faith, have you fallen in to, I believe, what's a current uh, trend in regard to religion, that we can just be religious uh, and we'll wind up in heaven. <clears throat> William Booth's fear in the late 1800s, I believe, and he made this statement of the 1900s, he said the chief danger that confronts the coming century will be religion without the Holy Ghost, Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without repentance, a salvation without regeneration, which means being made new, politics without God, and heaven without hell. 
I was struck with that thought because it very much describes the generation that we are living in. And my fear is here that someone might have a misplaced hope. Do you have evidence of the hope? Uh, it's designed to be in evidence. In uh, 1 Peter, I'm sorry for the, the confusion, Jack. You must be looking at the, the scriptures. You got it? 1 Peter. I'm going to try and find it myself. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Peter writes this to a group that are suffering. They are not uh, on an island, uh, on a lounge chair with a, 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 an alcohol-free uh, tr- tropical drink. They are suffering people. And he says to them, uh, but if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, Happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you of the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. As you suffer in this life with whatever, and honestly, I know that there's occasions when that whole, uh, as the doctor delivers that thought, or as you look at your books, uh, whoever does the, the books in your house, that there's a, a tendency and almost a natural, a bit of a deflating that goes on. But be connected again and allow him to fill you with hope. And the purpose for, actually I'm not sure of the purpose of suffering, but one of the benefits that we can uh, be used of God while we suffer is that the world can see this person should not be hopeful. This person should not be filled at this point. They're supposed to be deflated. And he says that the people will ask you, how can you have? I want to ask Sharon. She broke her leg months ago uh, and is going through it. Uh, I know you that work in the medical field. You'll have one room where you're like, I do not want to go near that room. Uh, There's no hope in there. There's just yelling and swearing and, and meanness. In there, my daughter tells me of, of these people that treat her horribly as a nurse in, in, a, in, a, in a ward. And then there's Christians that suffer, and yet they suffer with hope. Um, your poor mom got moved to a different room because she was trying to have a good spirit in the midst of some serious suffering. She still had a good spirit. She still had hope. <laughs> And the nasty swearing lady in the room next to her, they said to poor Mrs. Zuskin, uh, she had her own room. Uh, And as a reward for her kindness, they put her in, in she had a bunk mate now, uh, and the nasty lady, they were trying to isolate. Uh, but But as you suffer for Christ, be filled with hope. And let the world ask you, how can you have hope? in the midst of what you're going through and be ready to give an answer. Jesus Christ came. He was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life uh, and he died for me. And someday he's promised he's coming back and I've got eternity in heaven to look forward to. And I don't care. Uh, I I do care, uh, but you can't. What could you threaten me with? When God is my Father, if we were to stand in the presence of God, which one of your problems would be a problem still? If we were to go into the presence of God. But if Isaiah 7.14 tells us, I'll give you a sign, you're going to have uh, a virgin shall be with child, and his name shall be called uh, Emmanuel. I messed that up a little bit, but his name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with us. And so if, if we will find uh, the, the uh, alleviation of our suffering as we come into the presence of God, shouldn't at some measure, as the presence of God comes and dwells with us, shouldn't our problems be now his problems and shouldn't we find a peace uh, in the midst of it? I believe that our hope can be measured Uh, in direct proportion uh, to that which we hold to be concrete. Uh, I am God's. I'm a child of God. 
I am going to see God someday in heaven for eternity. And God loves me and wants me to be filled. These are concrete things that I have received of the word of God by faith. And these concrete things give me hope uh, in the midst of, of my time here on earth. I hope you can go through your time here on earth uh, filled with hope. Uh, you can't see it, but it's, it, nobody likes a, a deflated balloon. And uh, don't be a, a deflated balloon. Uh, be a balloon. And be a balloon that's gathered. Uh, be filled. Uh, and if you can't be uh, beautiful and filled, uh, at least uh, plug it. <laughs> Let's pray. And dear Lord God, thank you for your goodness, Lord, um, for this simple message of hope. I pray that you would fill us, God, with your hope. Might we be uh, beautiful uh, as you allow things into our life that the world would not um, be able to be beautiful in the midst of it, Lord. I pray that you would be that which car carries us, that fills us, and that um, connects us to you and then to the body of Christ. And might we be what you have intended us to be for your glory. Uh, God, we love you and we need you for every step of every day. Uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.